<laughs> Hello, my name is BJ Paris. Welcome to Tapping Into the Treasures. How is everybody? I hope you're all doing well. I'm doing well. Our theme today is Fix Your Upper. One of my favorite TV shows on TV is Fix Your Upper. Many of you watch it. A husband and wife team works for clients who buy an old house and hire a couple, this couple, to restore the house according to their, the buyer's specifications. The husband and many workmen knock down the walls and basically rebuild the house from the bottom up. It's a long, dragged out process. And it never fails every time the workmen knock down the walls on the main floor or in the basement or downstairs playroom, it's inevitable that they come across hidden damage. And that's true with everybody who buys a house. There's always something on scene before you buy the house that shows up after you purchase it. So it could be damage to pipes, wiring that is not up to code, water in the basement, water on the low front porch because the roots of a tree in the front yard is interfering with underground pipes, anything. So consequently, the workers have to notify the owners of the house to tell them about it and the owners have a strict budget and they are thrown for a loop. And that's happened to all of us throughout life, life right? So you know what I'm saying. It happened to my family back in the 60s and the 70s. And then when the restorations are completed, the wife, who is the designer, uh, the wife of the couple, uh, begins to decorate. And a day or two later, the owners come to see the house and are blown away by the transporta uh, transformation. I almost said transportation. <laughs> by the transformation. Every time I watch an episode, I can't help but think that it is basically what God does to each of us when we receive Christ into our hearts. When we become his children and come into his kingdom, he begins a slow work in us, not only to fix us up, but to make us all over, performing a complete transformation in us. He infiltrates us with his word, the Bible, his love and his nature. Is he doing that in your life today? I hope he is. Simultaneously, he is knocking down our old walls, walls of sin, walls of iniquity and negativity and unforgiveness, walls of bad attitudes and all those things. The process is slow, but every time a project is completed, it shows as a reflection of Christ. After a long period of time, the transformation is completed, finally, and all are mesmerized by its beauty and glory. In Jeremiah 18, the Lord tells the prophet Jeremiah in verse 2, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause you to hear my words. The words in verse 6 are almost synonymous with what I shared earlier. This is what it says, O house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter does? Says the Lord, Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand. So are you in my hand, O house of Israel. For this generation, the potter mentioned here, the potter mentioned here would be the same as an artisan today working with ceramics or clay to form different objects. When I say this generation, I'm, uh, I'm just saying those born the millennials there. Uh, those who are not familiar with the term potter, as in Jeremiah. So for this generation, the potter mentioned here would be the same as an artisan today working with ceramics or clay to form different objects. The southwestern part of the United States, uh, the Indians there have been making bowls for century. So that type of an artisan. The difference in the restoration process between a TV show and in God transforming us to become like his son does not take place in a matter of a month or two. On the TV series, there is a demolition day. And in our spiritual lives, there is a demolition decade or decades, not just a month or two. God is very gracious and he's very patient. Here's another symbolic story about our transformed lives in Christ. Elizabeth Taylor 
Most of you remember how beautiful she was. One of the most beautiful women in the whole world. But did you know that when she was a baby, she was one of the most, one of the homeliest? I gotta scratch that most out. I have most homeliest, and that is what you call a triple superlative. Most can't be used with L-I-S-T at the L-I-E-S-T at the end of the word. So let me back up. When she was a baby, she was one of the homeliest babies in the world. Did you know that? I read in her biography that she had a tremendous amount of hair covering her little face, and therefore her mother was embarrassed to take her out for a walk in the carriage. When she did, she would cover up the baby's face, and when passers-by insisted on a look, they were horrified at her ugliness. I could never get over how that God took one of the ugliest humans ever and transformed her into one of the most beautiful women who ever lived. This story is so symbolic of how God transformed our ugly lives before we become Christians into beautiful lives radiating the glory of God. I hope you enjoyed that little story. Acts 4.12 There is salvation in and through no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given among men by, <clears throat> excuse me, by and in which we must be saved. His name is Jesus. When we receive him into our hearts, the Holy Spirit immediately comes into us. Isaiah 118 says, Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins be, though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be like wool. Jesus made a supreme sacrifice and died for our sins once and for all. If you have already accepted Christ, then you know how wonderful it is to feel pure and clean without guilt and sin pressing down on you. Christ's sacrifice gave to everyone who by faith receives him eternal life in heaven. As amazing as that is, we are not exempt from going through pain and suffering in our lives here on earth. Yet God covered all the bases for us and gives us promises throughout the Bible to give us hope and rest. And I just want to read some of those uh, promises and encouragement in Matthew 11. These are very familiar verses. I call them my, my life verses because... Um, 1128 is my birthday, and this, these three verses start with Matthew 1128. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden and overburdened, and I will cause you to rest. I will ease and relieve and refresh your souls. The wording's a little different because I'm reading from the Amplified Bible. 29. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am gentle meek and humble, slowly, I mean lowly in heart, and you will find rest, relief and ease and refreshment and recreation and blessed quiet for your souls. In verse 30, for my yoke is wholesome, useful, good, not harsh, hard, sharp, or pressing, but comfortable, gracious, and pleasant, and my burden is light and easy to be borne. Isn't that beautiful? I want to rip my page here. There we go. For sure we will be bombarded by temptations of every kind, but the Bible tells us that for all the manifold temptations that come our way, God will give us manifold grace and wisdom. Can I read that again? Please. Grab onto that, because I grabbed onto it when I heard my pastor say it. For sure we will be bombarded by temptations of every kind, but the Bible tells us that for all the manifold temptations that come our way, God will give us manifold grace and manifold wisdom. Can I get an amen on that? All right. Psalm 94, 18. When I said, my foot is slipping, your mercy and loving kindness, O Lord, help me up. In verse 19, 
In the multitude of my anxious thoughts within me, your comforts, O Lord, held me up. How many of us have had anxious thoughts? Somebody's at my door. Hold on. <laughs> 